so yeah, generally um, with the Dibble and Emily, and I can't speak today, Dibble and Emily, <laughs> um, I tend to put it up top as a tank uh, with a double steel beast in the middle is the, the normal build. Um, and the thinking for that, of course, is as you found out, players that do understand how to play around an Emily will just pass and try and blast through in one turn. So the Rice Goda, which is what it tends to be on a beast, applies the pressure and just leaves them in a catch-22 of if I pass, they're going to steal my energy. If I attack, they're going to get heal value with their anemone. Um, that tends to be where you put it. Or some players like putting it on the back line as well, okay. uh, which can work. But higher so, up, uh, it's not as effective. What about splitting the front line? So like I had it set up kind of like this or something. I, can't, I don't remember exactly. Maybe like this. And Axe told me that I should change it to something <laughs> like this so that the green one's always in front. Big, I call them big green. But I noticed that if I split them, sometimes people it makes it harder for people to burst stuff because it splits the aggro sometimes. Am I crazy? Yeah, so it, it tends to sort of be, again, you benefit off players not uh, setting up their axes correctly because uh, most people put a tank in the middle and then their back two axes on the top or the bottom uh, row to then avoid if an opponent has a split, you know, as you were saying, so like, the like this basically in the same line. Yeah, so if, if they were split at the back, um, they'd be targeting the same axi. So across the same yeah, row as opposed to column. Um, so one at the front and then the, the aquas are going to, one's going to be in front of the other and one behind the other. Uh, um, so then you just know that if you're attacking, if they're both attacking, they're going to hit the guy on the top. Or if they were both at the bottom, they're going to hit the guy at the bottom. The problem with putting it all down the middle, as you've got here, which is what a lot of players do, um, is that there's a 50-50 chance whether it hits top or bottom if the opponent's got one split, as you were sort of oh, suggesting at the start. It's a dice roll. And that's roll. why players... Yeah, that's why you, you probably found some success with the split is because players position their axes like this rather than um, two at the top or two at the bottom. And that happens all the way up to even the top 50 I've faced people with axes in the same line. Um, so you would be able to have some success, but I'd imagine that as you move up and players start positioning their axes properly, you'll see more success from having them in the middle because they're all going to be targeted on one axis anyway. So you wouldn't be able to get value out of splitting and getting more heals because right. they don't know where they're attacking either. So the big brain play is that big green should be out front. That, that's basically the, the summary there. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Um, all right. Well, that makes sense in terms of I have like too much tank right now. So you're saying the dream would be to put, like, if I want to run this double anemone shit, I should have a beast backliner. Essentially, is what you're saying. So yeah, people run um, aqua at the front, beast in the middle, then any sort of backliner like a reptile or, or a plant at the back. Um, there's also some builds have a plant tank. Uh, a tri spikes reptile in the middle and then the anemone at the back but i tend to like the rice goda the only sort of issue is that if you do face a lot of birds um specifically ones with post fight you'll have a lot of trouble because they can just smash your aqua in one turn or you're forced to carry on playing cards to try and save up and at one point they might just you know knock you down with their slower axes and then in the following round kill you with the bird before you get a chance to heal um so it really depends what you're facing a lot whether the the um, anemone is going to be valuable at the back or at the front. Okay, I got gotcha. you. All right, so what about so so what would you recommend with the the stuff that I've got here? Um, like is like a bird aqua? Is this a ridiculous lineup right here? Does this make no sense? So some bird aqua teams work, um, but they tend to have to have some beast or bug damage to help you round out and get through tanks a bit more easily. Um, the, the main issue with a bird like your one with the little owl that doesn't have an eggshell is that you can't sacrifice it for your beast or any other axie that has a better uh -huh. matchup against reptiles and plants. Okay. So often, especially as you don't have a, a beast or a bug part to help you get through those reptiles or plants, if they have a backliner that's a reptile or a plant, you haven't got much way of outplaying them. So that's why people tend to run an eggshell with them. But from your axes, um, I would probably either run a bird aqua with the bird at the back and then the top Nemo aqua you had, the one with piranha, uh, goldfish, and clamshell. I think okay. it's right at the top of, of your axes. Oh, uh, this one right um, here? Or, yeah, or a double anemone uh, axie at the back instead of the bird. And you had one with koi. And koi tends to work really nicely in a double aqua as a way to counter bird beast. Um, but Koi is also pretty good 
with uh, an anemone backliner because you can negate slows and prevent you know the situation we spoke about earlier where if they've got an incisor or a lagging with a reptile they might attack you one round double slow you and then next round they can finish you off before you get the chance to heal and the koi just stops that from happening so they have to either kill you all in one or they can't kill you at all now what about koi with do i want a double anemone koi is that nice yeah i think that would be be the one you'd go with um okay. so the plant tank up top uh, in the middle then the ine double anemone koi i'd go at the back uh so that's top or bottom either either works like here and then yeah and then one step back as well so uh, just okay back yeah. here yeah and then the midliner though you had one with goldfish and clamshell so just a bit more damage than a double anemone um and that might help you out in the mid game okay. a bit more i think it was goldfish clamshell this one okay yeah that that's one. funny so i pegged this middle axie i think this might be a recent breed I didn't think that he was that great, but I've got, what do I have here? I've got Nemo. So this is actually good. Is that what you're telling me? This, uh, what skill is this one? The extra damage Clam to shell. beast bug, Meg? Yeah, Clam Shell's actually legit, huh? Yeah, that, that's a fairly standard um, Nemo build. And the reason why the Clam Shell's quite good is that it just provides you with a bit more shield. So you've got the ability to brick crawl in the mid game. Okay. Um, and it has more consistent damage than a double anemone. And you, you'll probably, hopefully, find situations where the opponent can't just pass and then smash six cards into you because you've got a threat of actually having some damage on your side as well uh, to help right. get through. Okay. So if you just slot that um, the middle aqua that you've got there in front of your your koi aqua, the one with the Nemo just in front, yeah. So then you know that if they've got split tanks, you're going to be attacking with the one that's on the top. Gotcha. Holy shit. The positioning is kind of confusing, but it also makes sense. It's not actually confusing. It's just nuanced i guess is the word it's like yeah some detail i believe to it. in in the uh auto battlers which was before v1 uh yeah. there was some sort of you know, like more attack damage at different positions i didn't play back then but there's this chart that sometimes people find off the internet and put in the discord that's like attack plus speed plus and that's why they had so many different positions um it really only matters for top or bottom so um, and then the idea here is like, if we get into a 1v1, you have the double anemone who is less likely to get bursted in the pure 1v1. And you can actually, like, you can, it's amazing in a heads up kind of battle because you just heal forever. Yep. And if you face a bird, you've got this koi, which is sort of a staple of a lot of double aqua builds, mm -hmm. um, it, which just allows you to dictate when you speed up. And as long as you, as, as long as you save three energy by the time you get to a 1v1, you can speed up ahead of a bird and just kill them with three cards. And that's like your ultimate counter to bird beast. All right. Well, let's have a go. Let's uh, let's see what happens here. Oh, yeah. I might have to rearrange cameras. I don't know if I have you covering up key data. There we go. Let's try that. that should be good. <laughs> okay. All right. So I got I to gotta think about this. Uh, <clears throat> um, so you always want to play your tail slaps, right? Tail slaps are nope. good. No? No. Nope. Okay. Nope. <laughs> so the thing with nemo is that you tend to want to hold it uh, until you absolutely need that energy because otherwise you end up using too many cards and the fewer cards you have the fewer options you have you don't want to be in a position where you've oh. only got three or five cards on your hand because then you can't really dictate the outcome of the match so here the decision for me would be between playing one pumpkin or, or passing pumpkins. entirely oh and <laughs> the the reason why i'd say passing entirely is if you click on their beast um that style of rimp is quite combo dependent. This is exactly the rimp that I had. Exactly. <laughs> so you probably understand the, yes. the sort of failings of it. Where it's you're awful. You have to have four combo. cards. Yeah, yeah. All yep. right. I so skipped entirely. That's why you, you tend to not uh, expect to see any beast cards round one. Even really in round two, you're not you're not seeing too many beast cards. Um, so round one, you can afford to pass. And, so and now this is where your tank's a bit lower. They've got a fair bit of energy because they stole one. They played two, stole one, and gained one with their Cotton Tower, so they're back at five. Yeah. Um, so you would look to play a Pumpkin to at least try and have a bit of shield. But double Pumpkin tends to be something that people avoid because you're putting a lot of energy and cards into one outcome, and you want to be covering as many as possible, generally, in Axie. So just playing the one Pumpkin, and you know if they attack with loads of cards and they manage to get the kill, it's not the end of the world. If they pass, it's not the end of the world either because you draw a card. But double Pumpkin... If they pass, it's just a massive investment. All right. And then I guess we're confident if uh, even if they kill Big Green here, our Aquas can do it with all the stuff we stockpiled. Yep. 
pretty uh, much. And skipping is so scary in Des. Me. It makes me so nervous. I just want to kill him. I want to make him <laughs> feel the hurt. Oh, dear. And yeah, so now you've seen the carrot and the pumpkin out of the front tank, so you could attack, but at the same time, you've got this nice uh, serious pumpkin on your front tank, which is a fairly safe play. So I would just play that. I wouldn't even play any So offense. he's like you pretty to... pretty low on energy, so with like a 140 shield, we think that Big Green's going to survive long enough to actually use these. Yeah, because they're, they're at three energy, so they could go with like a, a double Ronin Imp, something like that. But as you're quite low on health, I wouldn't expect them to use much damage okay you read it perfectly the big brain strikes again again <laughs> so they're up at three again i believe um and now this is when you you've seen both carrots um because the way the card draw works is that you have 24 cards in a deck two cards per part just get rid of an anemone yeah so 24 cards per part so you know that until the deck resets and they start drawing cards again that once you've seen two of any one part that they're not going to come back up in there deck so now you can start thinking about how are you going to kill this tank um, all right so that's literally one. something that's never entered my brain while playing this game he's played two of this one <laughs> he can't play it again all right all right that's good to know so can i start doing damage now can i like pummel this yeah, guy this is this is when you can start pummeling them um so probably both of those piranhas yeah the crimson water yeah save one goldfish so a clamshell and a goldfish and then you can chuck on a lamb as well um, oh god, I did it too slow. Just, just spam, spam. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, I'm still a little slow with the names. Sorry about that. Yeah, it, they've got they've got different names. I think it was sort of a. Um, I'm not sure what they're thinking at the time, but now it, in the future at least it'll be adapted into V2. As, I mean, I'll be know, real. Coming from Dota, LP. every hero has like a, uh, their current name and their hipster name, so I sort of oh, feel at right, home. Okay. It's just, it's a lot of data to parse. Um, Fair enough. All right, so I definitely want to play these tail slaps though, just in case. Yeah. This, so uh... this in this spot, this is something that we call splitting or a split kill. Um, so they could potentially play one pumpkin on their tank. So what you want to do is play one attack from your backliner. Um, yeah, so a lamb, something like that. So then, if they don't put up any shield, you get the kill. If they put up some shield, your follow up attacks, which is going to be your double Nemo, your clam slash, and your um, your goldfish will make sure that you or ensure that you get the kill. Um, and you set up lots of positions like this with double aqua where you're just making sure that one way or the another, one way or another, you're going to get a kill on an axi. I see. And like, so should I feel bad about playing that extra card there? Or is that kind of like you want to cover yourself? It's it's not the end of the world there. You, you could have held on to it um, because they only had three energy. But yeah, again, it's not, not too... Uh, bad of a play and here so um, i definitely want to need one play more as something well. from the back yeah right yep so that will be enough to get a kill um and it also forces them to have to use three cards from that but what there if he goes double piercing kill. sound then it won't kill him i generally when you have enough energy to kill a beast they will avoid playing cards on it unless it's zero cost like their cotton tail um so here Fuck, you're right again man <laughs> Every time I think I'm about to be like, well, actually, you just completely got it. Although he does have, you know. This is perfect, actually. So they, they've sped up. Um, and that actually doesn't have enough damage to kill you with four cards, assuming you put up your four cards. So with a double lamb, double koi, um, if they play all their energy, which is, is four, they will force you into the lamb range. So beneath 50%, you'll get uh, your bonus damage and then you'll get the kill. Are you, you sure we, we don't want to play any anemone because we go second and we'll heal up? Nope. You'll, you'll have enough to just get the kill clean okay. here. All right. I believe. So he only played two cards, which is interesting. Um, maybe they were expecting you to go with anemones, so they were just trying to... Actually, that, that makes sense. So in that position, because you've got a double anemone, Axie, and they know you're at four energy, what they're expecting you to do is something like quad anemone and just try and heal all your way back up. Oh, that's so exactly what I was going to do. That's that is if you weren't yeah. here, I would have played that exactly. <laughs> yeah, so they would have actually outplayed that because they played those two cards, saved their four energy. So what they were hoping was that once you'd use all your shield and all your heals, and the next round they go first, they can use four cards and they'd have been able to get the kill because you wouldn't have had had as much shield. Uh, but there you just knew you could get the kill regardless of what they played. So that was why you wanted oh. the the four attacks. Yeah, you knew. I uh wow. <laughs> Holy shit, that was a that was so much to digest. You think about like 
man, I'm playing on like layer one. You're over here on layer three, like counting energy. And ah, oh, man, I thought Axie was this really relaxing, easy game. And now I'm learning that there's nothing relaxing about it. <laughs> That's the good part. That's what I think <sighs> is the beauty of the simple complexity is that until you get told about it, you just think there's there's nothing else to it. I was like um, not really following everything you were saying until the very end. And that was the most black and white. <laughs> like I 100%, I had eight cards to play. You suggested four. I would have absolutely played the other four. Your play was an, a, a, a guaranteed win on that that turn right there. And mine would have lost me the game in another few more turns. That's like <laughs> insane to digest how much I misread that situation versus how confident I was that foreign enemies was completely right. Similarly, that I thought just opening with lamb and building energy, or not lamb, uh, the tail slap and getting energy was just like, yeah, I got to get energy as fast as possible. Just play them things. So, okay. A lot learned yeah, that's, there. That's a big thing that lots of people do is that the Nemo's, the Cotton Tails, they just play them as soon as they get them. Um, and it ends up coming back to bite you because as we mentioned, well, as I mentioned with the... Um, the 24 cards per deck you can often uh by holding the nemos as long as you use them before your deck resets you can even get positions where you use two nemos in like round four or five and then the next round you get two nemos back and you end up with just a, a boatload of energy in the mm -hmm. mid game along with all of your other cards so then you can really start cycling off lots of damage that is the most big brain thing i've i've ever heard you double nemo right before the deck reset so you have a chance at another double <laughs> yeah. nemo my god all right uh that was like 15 20 i think something like that so yeah not not too high and i don't think we drew a single healing aroma that last time so there you go all right so this is an easy easy skip right yep so with this they've only got one steel which is a serious on the front tank so you're not really scared um if they had two well generally when you're looking at three or more steels it's when you start thinking oh, i'm just going to play lots of damage and i'll attack them um but here you don't really have to that's Sometimes a scary the beast clerk, yeah that that is a bit scarier than that rimp last time they've got a bit more damage um sometimes with the black club people are, will like to go aggressive but that's really only when you have damage from your tank i think yeah they've just got enough that's 165 165 yeah Unfortunately, uh... first round was a scary beast but at least you didn't draw more cards onto your plant that tends to be something that people hate is when they just get a last stood axi and draw three cards straight onto it. Uh, um, yeah, that's fair. But wow, man, I know that beast is scary, <laughs> but geez. All right, so you don't play the, the treat, right? No. Sometimes if you if you have loads of energy and you don't have many cards, playing a pumpkin into a last stand can be a good play, but it's really quite fringe okay. situations. Um, so this is another skip. Yeah. With all your attacks. Um, because you there's sort of two thinking passages of thinking here one is you haven't seen any tank cards they're probably expecting you to attack so they're going to want to play tank cards but at the same time you also don't want them to pass and then yeah just play all the attack cards then the coin and the lamp uh yeah the coin perfect the the other thing is that you're worried that if you pass and they don't play cards um then you might draw some more cards onto your tank and you can't use those cards because it's in last stand yeah okay that's fair i think all they right. played either serious mint or double beach Okay, serious mint. Mint, that's that thing. Oh, it is a mint. Oh, look at that. <laughs> okay. Do you like the uh, carrot tail? By the way, is carrot hammer? I I know it's like kind uh, of controversial. That, that is that's one of my sort of not catchphrases, but it's something I say a lot. Is hate carrot. It's uh, I don't particularly like it. I think it's one of those moves that it's very specific situations that it can work out in. Like here, mm -hmm. uh, it could work out, but other tails. Uh, especially hot butt is just one that you can use in lots more situations the ability is more helpful um and just the base stats are, are better carrot has has been popular for a, a lot of time mm -hmm. um ever since really the start after yam was nerfed at least it was really popular and i think it's just because it's quite an easy one to pick up but you can see the value you get an energy back so people think oh it must be really good um but yeah it's, it's just the base stats aren't great and uh, other moves um, like hot butt, play a similar role, but just better. Um, gotcha. And then if you want a, a different type of tank, maybe you want Hatsune if you're using a watering can. So you just need a little bit extra shield. With Hatsune, you get more shield and you get a disable. Um, there's lots of different so, moves like that or a cattail or even a yam, which do well. Uh, I think here, we don't play this Swift Escape, right? Because no, I only have one card I'm going to miss anyway. 
Do I play? Um, don't actually want to kill the beast yet either, um, because you would rather the beast stays alive and they draw cards onto an axi, which isn't going to give them much value because your aqua's faster and can kill it at any point. Oh my so they can't justify gosh. playing cards on it. Now that is big brain. You're keeping it alive because I know I'm going to go first. So now he might have just drawn two cards on the beast that I'm about to evaporate from the field. Yep. So now you can afford your three card combo, like a coy double lamb. Um, and that's all you need to kill the beast because even if for whatever reason they decide to try and use cards on the beast, they'd need to use nutcrackers to be able to survive or, or even get into last stand. Um, so it's not the end of the world if they do attack. And he just skips. And now oh, yeah. he plays this is sort of where your your um, Koi comes in handy because with these incisors, what they could do um, if you didn't have Koi was just smash you with um, two, two incisors, do lots of damage, slow you so they attack ahead and then they'll finish you off. Um, I don't expect it's going to be a tough 1v1 regardless, so you might still end up losing, but the Koi at least gives you more of a shot. Um, so All here, right. in so... terms of plays, you definitely want to play two Koi's. The question is how much shield you put up, whether you go with an extra lamb just for a bit of shield, um, or you just hold off because you definitely need some energy um, next round to try and heal up. But it's just it's a difficult choice because if they do go with uh, their double incisor, then a Navaga Trump. I think uh, they'd just be able to get the kill if you play two. Um, here you should survive whatever they play. Um, I went three I had... by the eleven of damage. Yeah, it's gonna be tight. They tried the Navagas, so that worked out all right. Okay. Okay. So, all right, let me think here. The first one's going to miss because of the stun. So, we want to throw like a lamb first for the miss and then go all in enemies to heal, right? Yep. That would be the play for me. Um, it really depends how they approach this matchup because it's not a great one because they're stunned. Um, but they could just throw out all their damage now and, and end up still giving you an opportunity to win. Uh, it's going to be a long one either way. Okay. This is pretty intense. I like it. <laughs> Double an enemy. This is solid. That's the worry is the stuns. Yeah, I'm going to start having energy issues also. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this could be a tough position. Okay. So because you've just seen, it, this is another little point. Um, in the top right corner, it shows you the number of cards the opponent had at the beginning of the last round. Mm-hmm. Um, so they were at four last round. They played four cards. You draw three cards per turn, so that means they've only got three cards. Um, and since we, we think they're only at um, two energy now, no two-card combo from the opponent, I believe, can kill you because you've got uh, two, six, six, and their incisors would be one, three, two. And the hope is that they don't draw a, a so green skip? Is that they the, just uh... two. So skip is the play. Hopefully... Oh, no, they got, they've no, got the three got energy. Three. All so, right. Yeah, the hope was that they had two energy. And, and he got the crit anyway. The so there you go. <laughs> you would have been able to survive. That would have been it. That would have been all she wrote. All right, that was a tough yeah. one, though. They, they had the... Uh, I mean, that is like the hallmark of the beasts. I'm not going to lie. Even the Cottontail, when you get that draw on round one <laughs> or like round two, you're just loaded up on rimp cards, it, you can break a game where you kill an Axie yeah. and also gain like three energy from killing an Axie. The problem is you only you like the expected value on that play feels below 50 percent where the chances of that happening are so low and the, the he's so useless unless he hits that combo where a lot of these other cards like I can do a lot with just one or two card combos with these Axies compared to the Beast. So that guy did get uh I don't want to say he got lucky, but that was a good way for him to start that game. Yeah, that I think rimps is something that uh, people almost grow out of as they as they move up. Um, they they go to more consistent card combinations like a, a goda or or a vice for their steals, and then just full mm -hmm. damage with like a, a dual blade risky beast. Some people even use double nut, and then a high damage move plus a hero, which is a zero cost beast move, which does sixty damage as well. Um, and I think that's just for the consistency. And in the higher ranks, you also face a bit more post-fight and moves like that, mm -hmm. which is a zero cost, which is a load of damage. So you want your beast to be able to get its value before it's exposed and before your tank uh, dies. And usually you can ensure that your beast is still alive through energy steals. Because if you limit your opponent to two energy, unless they have a post-fight or another high damage zero cost, you'll survive any card combo in the game. 
um mm. and that's why beast of steel is a fairly popular as you move up the problem with the rimp as you've said is like unless you draw the combo like the opponent just did there you can just be waiting till round four round five for the combo and your entire <laughs> game plan is based on when you're drawing those Ooh, cards the mirror matchup dude look at this except he's got his anemone <laughs> in the middle and he has a navaga or whatever that thing is instead of uh, a koi so i think mine is better i like my setup although the this is a really solid tank the disguise this is good all right, this is going to be yeah. interesting. So okay. skip or treat, right? Those are our two choices I, here. You, you could also just go with straight damage here um, because as they don't have a heal tank like you do, um, and also that sort of Ooh. set of moves, you don't really play carrots round one very often, um, I hope. And pumpkin as well. It's, it's not really a round one move. So I think a koi and then a piranha goldfish, you'd be able to get away with that because in this matchup, because they don't have that much damage either. Um, you're right. not too worried about needing energy spare to keep your tank alive. Any and passes? this is okay. just what we call sort of true damage, uh, where you know they're not going to be playing much shield, so you can just get a quick set of damage off on the, the opponent. Yeah. And now they're worried about you following up and getting damage and killing them, so they're probably going to try and put up shield themselves. I love and so it. So you can either pass or just defend your tank, and you expect to you know, see carrots, pumpkins, something like that. Now, is it crazy to go treat serious here? That I think that would be my play. You either pass or you, or you pumpkin serious. You're not expecting them to attack too hard. You're probably expecting more of a of a brick wall. But either yeah. way, they're probably going to do enough damage to give value to your pumpkin. Oh, okay. There we are. So and I think that's a leaf book carrot as well. So they'll have a spare energy for you to steal. Oh, that's good. And Big Green will survive. Yep. Very nice. Oof. Willie? Yeah, Woo. just about. <laughs> that was lucky he crit on that one. My gosh. Yeah. That's that like as lucky as it, as far as crits go, that's as lucky as it gets from my side. <laughs> now, okay. okay, so now the question is, treat Aroma. Will I survive? I, I would probably go with it, to be honest, because... Um, at this rank, again, I'm not sure how many people go for split kills, uh, like one card from each, which is what we spoke about last match. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's more likely they'll go with one attack and then try and protect their tank. Uh, and even if your tank does go down, it's not really the end of the world. You do have spare. Well, you're exactly Thanks. right. And he gets another crit? Jesus. Whoa. Wow. How sad okay. would you be, though, if you got two crits and you still haven't killed anything? I mean, come on, man. <laughs> I, th I think the crits are working in our favor right now. Oh, dear. Okay. So, now they're at three again. Uh, or are they at three? No, they're out. Um, so, you can... Oh, a heal would be... A heal would be getting pretty risky, but you could probably get away with it because any one attack from the opponent wouldn't be enough damage. The only combination of one energy, like spending one energy from those aquas that would kill you would be um, a lamb Nemo from their midliner. We've already seen one lamb. So you could get away with that because, again, thinking they're probably going to try and defend their tank. And then I'd go yeah, with two Yeah, let's try it. Well. Let's, what, what, oh, there it is. Oh, oh there you go. There okay. it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is good, though, because five. I have more healing. Like, I don't know. We're, we're buying time. And, oh, okay, this is solid. I get the yeah. carrot. All right, so this is a the time to use thing, carrot, right? I've got your Nemos and everything as well, so you don't need to use, like, you don't... You don't worry about having so little um, energy in these mid spots. You don't even need to use the Nemos yet, to be honest. Um, I would go with two attacks from your backliner, um, the Koi and, and the Lamb, probably. Um, and then you could actually go the double Nemo uh, yeah. from your midliner with one more attack. And the thinking again here is that if they put up a massive brick wall, you want to be able to get the kill with the combined damage of both of your axes. Right. Uh, the only worry is that you end up doing a lot of damage and giving heal to their anemone, but again, it's not the end of the world because you've got a lot of spare energy. You can just wait yeah. till they heal up and finish them off afterwards. So this is perfect. So this is the split you're talking about where we kill him and now we can do yes. damage elsewhere versus... Yeah, yeah. All and right. so... It is an anemone, so they can heal up, but generally uh, that play is nice is because they don't have heals on their midliner. Okay. So they have just enough. Alright, and then... And, oh, actually, so they won't be able to get heal value here because you, you sped up with your backliner using a Koi and your midliner got speed ups with their, with your um, goldfish as well. So you can go, again, same sort of play as we were thinking last time. Three cards from the midliner, which is 
just over enough, you'll do 128, 128, well, 128, 140, 128. So then if they put up three energy worth of shield, they'll just survive. So you need one more anemone from your backliner to make sure their midline 100% dies, regardless of what they do. Um, and, you know, if they don't put up shield, you get some chip damage on their backliner. Yeah. Okay, big shield. So they'll just survive, and then the anemone just ensures it. Perfect. Wow. Man, the human calculator over here. <laughs> so now at this point, fairly straightforward, right? We just play damage. Yeah, you can afford those two cards there um, because you you are expecting him to be out of energy. Um, so you know that he can't kill you with any card combination. But to be honest, I would just pass because you have the speed advantage. Your, your, aqua, your mid aqua is injured, so it goes four. And your back aqua has a lower ID. Because oh what, he, what he's looking to do yeah. there is just speed up so he can make sure you can't use any cards when you midliner and it's just... It's You're too no good at this, dude. Anymore. You knew exactly what he was going to do. He was just going to use the <laughs> speed up thing. And if I had hit him, I would have just given him the speed advantage. Oh my God. Passing is so, so, so much ridiculously better than I realized. <laughs> and then, yeah, just get the kill with any, any combination of cards. You'll get the kill here. Wow. Again, dude. And, and, I mean, not that he would have like won with that speed boost, but still, that just completely, whatever little chance he had there just evaporated. <laughs> yep. That's amazing. That is that is actually amazing. Yeah, this um, this spread of axes is way better than the quad and enemy I was running. I <laughs> I see what you were talking about with I. I I like the koi double anemone. It's actually pretty, pretty solid. Yeah, it's it's. I think Zeb was the one that was experimenting with it a while back. He was in the chat earlier. You might ah. correct me. Um, but yeah, the koi was always that that thinking that you could either speed up against axes or negate slows um, of the opponents. And as long as they don't have stuns, it, it's a really really hard backliner to get around. I think last time I tried to do this, where I did one koi, one Nemo. I confused goldfish and koi, so I had them in the wrong spot where I had goldfish in the back and koi in the middle, but you want it the other way because you got to take damage for goldfish to do anything, so you want him yeah. to be your midliner. That's a really basic concept, but my dumb ass still screwed that up, so, <laughs> you know, that's, uh, oh, all right, this should be interesting. Oh, there we go. What is this guy in the back? Old Shelly here? Some yeah, sticky that, that's goo? That's what people call, call a Terminator, and um, they're, they're really popular in yeah really popular as you move up sort of anything from i would say 2000 rank all the way through to top 200 um you see them a fair bit and yeah the whole the whole thing with it is that with a double stun you can stop your opponent from you know doing any damage to you in some points like you get two attacks that aren't stunned <laughs> if they stun you one round and then have a snail shell the next round all right so a lot of people find this build annoying i got you yeah. so this is my big question. You always want to play the, the, the serious, but you said you don't want to play Carrot on the first round. Is this a bad opener? Yeah, so because their beast is fairly card card combo, you know, card draw dependent again, they've got yeah. lots of combos on it. You're not expecting the round one. But from round two, um, you are you know anticipating more damage from the opponent because they might have the cards to do so. So a Carrot serious in round two uh, definitely isn't a bad play. Um, and the whole thing with carrot that I, I dislike is is if that were a um, a hot butt on your front tank, you could have played the hot butt serious. If they pass, you don't mind because you get solid damage. You disable their serious and you get steel. But with carrot, if you got a carrot serious, the only value you got there was a bit less damage. You got a steel at least, but you don't get the the whole sort of selling point of a carrot, which is the energy gain um, when they break your shield. Gotcha. Oof, that's a lot of energy you spent. Spent all five, generated two there. He'll steal one of those back, so he'll be at one now. And then he'll steal one back with a serious here if he's ordered it correctly. Yeah, okay. So I'll be at four. Wow, so we're at even... Oh, no, yeah. Are we at even energy and he has an additional Axie? How fun. As, as in four um, now. Oh, but, four yeah, with the so we're plus two. two. Yeah. 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 So here... Pretty much just looking what's the best way to kill the tank. Um, so we're looking at like... A bit thin. Um, yeah, I'd probably go the Koi from the back and then end with the Nemo here on your front tank as well. 
and front tank, front liner. Okay, so you won't have enough here. The, the sort of play, reason behind this play was that in case they didn't play this carrot, um, so they would have had 44 less shield, you would have been able to get the kill with the Nemo. And the reason why mm -hmm. the Nemo is at the end is that then stops them from going into last stand because the way last stand works, you know, if you're over by a higher percentage, there's less of a likelihood for them to enter last stand. So playing, you know, hundred being 120 damage uh, over a 110 shield axi is a lot less likely to go into last stand than 30 damage to a 20 HP axi. And that's why you put that at the end. Um, and again here, same sort of thing as last time, looking to do your split. So one from the middle, uh, one from the back, because you don't want to kill the beast yet, because you'd rather it be alive for a couple more turns, draw some more yeah. cards onto it. All right, okay. got him. So the hallmark of this guy in the back, what makes yeah. him the Terminator is the Chomp and the Goo together, correct? That's that's the yeah, Terminator? The stand. Yeah. And then people tend to, like a lagging plus something. So the lagging is the horn. Uh, Thorny tends to be the spot there, but some people also use things like, um, I think hair is used there as well, which is a high damage beast part. Um, okay, so here, I don't, just if I work out quickly, but 160, 146, 40. I don't, just be short. Yeah, I think that's not uh, enough. With that. Yeah, so you probably want to go with that because you are expecting your, your guy to go down or they might even try and brick call it if they're crazy. Um, but here, this is pretty much the best possible position you can be in against the Terminator where you just want to get as much damage as you can before they start stunning your backliner. Especially since you don't have a zero cost to play around these stuns very easily on your backliner. So what is the mechanic of like double stun when he uses two stuns like this? It doesn't stack or anything, so, right? Yeah, so assume you're in a 1v1 here with this midliner. Um, you'd miss one, your first attack, because you're stunned. Yeah. Uh, let's say your second attack breaks their shield. The snail shell then applies another stun to you. So you, you miss your third attack, and then your fourth attack, you get to their health. Uh, so stuns don't stack. Um, so something like a snail shell fish snack, which is another thing that some people use. Mm -hmm. um, if you break... Uh, the shield, the snail shell. At the same time, you use a bird or an aqua part. Both suns are drawn in. So here, just the two attacks there, and then koi anemone. Uh, your lamb. Your order doesn't matter as much. But yeah, the reason why you're doing this is just you know this is probably the last turn your midline is going to be alive. So you're trying to do as much damage as possible straight to the health. Gotcha. Get as much as you can. You want to break the shield. Got it. That makes sense. You know this guy's sacrificed, so. And as long as he doesn't crit. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And now you can just pass and full card in the next round. Oh yeah, okay. If they're Man, smart, the, they'll play a double lagging. The late game passes. That is something I have grossly underestimated. <laughs> oh, that's a massive brick wall. That's pretty good. That means they're probably quite low low on energy or at least cards because again top corner five cards means they're at five so they might not have their full shield combo and here um in terms of order i would say so you like go that? with the two high attacks first then an anemone third and then a high attack oh okay last. it's gonna take two to break the shield you think yeah because their max amount of shield they can do is 200 their lowest playing like a snail shell chump is going to be 115 and, and this is a snail shell thorny chump plus a lagging so you it works right. out nicely there in the middle. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I'm uh, understanding the depth and complexity of this game on an entire another level. I've, I've seen some of your streams before, and I, I know that you've like... I know you play the game this way, but it's still staggering when I'm driving and you're saying all this shit where, like, every time <laughs> you're telling me to do something, in my head, I'm trying to like a b test that with what i would have done and it really doesn't match up that often even at the end there in my head i was like oh this is over i got two energy i'll just place <laughs> two cards here and just kill him and however many turns it takes it doesn't matter wow <laughs> are those terminators expensive Simple complexity Oh, I think they used to be really expensive. When they first were built, um, it was a build that Quan made, Quan's with Levox. Um, they started on bugs, transferred over to reptiles, and at the start, they would go consistently for over an ETH. 
Um, and, and at the time, that was quite unheard of for battle axes. They normally only went up to about 0.5 ETH, and he was just rattling them off for an ETH because he only had like five or six. There were only that many in the entire game. Um, but now they've been mass bred um, as the genes were let out. So I believe they range from sort of 0.1 with a hair to 0.175 with a, a, oh, okay. a thorny. Um, so not that they're bad. fairly reasonable yeah and the whole thing with them is that unless you have a zero cost it's it's very painful to beat them in the 1v1 but they get completely shut down by a gravelan um so you'll often see in the discord and the feedback suggestions anybody that runs a terminator will be complaining about how broken gravelan is oh we got a pseudo mirror matchup here i don't recognize this say? back what the hell is this thing is that scale That's dark a, a blue moon yeah it's not as popular um as goldfish because that they weren't on the lines that ben bred uh ben was the one the guy that bred all of these pure aquas originally um Ooh, all the risky shoal goldfish and yeah they normally come with goldfish blue moon's a ranged move and it is a bit more damage so it's quite popular um on backliners because it's a way to get around gravelant and indian star and also offers you a bit more damage um uh, yeah this i hate double this steel dude. tank is yeah that's quite something um so because he's only got two steals, you, you're not too worried about them stealing from you. Of course they could, but it's not the end of the world because you've got the Nemo's to fall back on. All right. So well, I'm very worried about much. it, but I'll, I'll believe in you, sir. Okay. Well, my worry was justified. That The first time no Indez way. is wrong. Clip it. There you go. That's amazing. Clip it and ship All it. Three. Triple. So All he has... Three. So like, let, me get, let me count the energy here. He should have... Because <laughs> he had to play an energy for all those. So I have two. Does he have five right now? Yeah. And he got damage. Oh, that is amazing. Wow. Did not expect that to happen. That's so, yeah, of their, of the six cards they drew, they drew three of their four steals from the first hand. And I ha I don't have a single Nemo, so I can't. Oh, <laughs> and dude. I don't have anything I can combo my bite with. Oh, That's sad. I got to skip again, right? Comeback. Yeah, you got to pass here. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I think they've stolen again with another rice. That's all four steals in the first two rounds. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> oh, wow. This is some top oh, deck madness. All right, so wow. I'm, I'm guessing we're going to want to play the Nemo, yeah? Yeah, Nemo... Probably goldfish as well to try and get a speed up. The worry is they just flat out kill you, which they have the energy to. We're just not sure whether they have the cards so to be able to. Do we do throw that. in a clamshell just in case to try to live? Yeah, I, I don't think they'd preemptively heal here. Okay. okay. So unfortunately, they did pass. Um, but at least you now have four energy and you can probably just afford to spend all of it on a brick wall. I just go all four of those midline cards. Because uh, you know if your midliner goes down, you 100% lose. You also think they may try and brick wall and heal. Um, so it should work out all right. So he does the Yeah, that's split. a double heal from the front. Hasn't got enough, though. Just short. Uh, yeah, one, two, eight here. Nice. Okay, we got a chance. Hopefully you draw a Nemo as well um, now to get some energy back. Because there is a slim shot. Because especially as, again, uh, you're at a sort of lower rank low middle rank yeah um so Ooh, you you would God. expect them to misplay against the anemone a fair bit oh okay this is the dream actually right so we got the speed so we go first yeah, so we get the, the tail Nemo. slap now do we want to play anything from the back i don't think so right i i wouldn't play anything because all your moves have got a fair bit of shield so you're thinking about using defense as offense um you know playing one attack here is 30 wasted shield versus using it next round Oh, Ooh, he gets a the crit to too. <laughs> you gotta to start the, the, crit, right? the crit counter here. All okay, right. So here, probably looking at a koi. Uh, you either double koi anemone or koi double anemone. Um, again, they do have a fair bit of spare energy, but if you look at the top right, uh, they only have four cards in hand. So, well, four hand cards in hand at the start of last turn. They used two. So they'll only be at maths work five. Um, um, I'm going to go double an enemy. Yeah, and worst case is they pass, but then that midline is frozen out. Any cards that are drawn onto it are useless because you're going to kill it next round because you're faster. Okay, he passes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the That's Koi gives us the speed boost now. Ah, 
I've lost yeah. so many late games to Aquas where I think, I'm going to go first with my bird and win. And then he does that. And I go, <laughs> oh, damn it. Again. I don't know what the cards do. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. So, yeah, here, probably just one card. Um, I'd go with the lamb. Just a single lamb. They could still brick call. But this is one of those spots that although they could play a massive brick call on the midliner, if you're trying to count for that, you lose either way. You need four energy to try and take on the I see. It's like a high risk. High... Yeah, okay. Well. Nice. Okay. That's so as something. long as he... Oh, he misordered, but I okay. think I've got enough. Yeah, they got enough I'm damage. still dead. Yeah. yeah, all right. Well, it was close. That was like an almost comeback after, for a... Yeah. Oh, my after God. The first round. <laughs> what is this? I think I have gotten one crit, oh, and I've been crit like yeah. six times. Oh, we got we got videotape evidence of it. This is... <laughs> I'm joining team remove crits. Like I'm going to be writing Trung an email internally before too long. At all issued memo. Crits are dumb. Oh, damn. That is, yeah, they're generally not this bad as well. Oh. It just seems to not be going well. And they're coming from Aquas too, which doesn't yeah. happen all that often. I play Aquas a fair bit, and it's like once every 10 games you might get a crit. Oh, man. I can't believe that start. So that energy steal start, though, that's why I don't see that very commonly, like the double steal on tanks. It does feel decent, yeah. though. Maybe it's just like a, a cognitive or like a, a confirmation bias thing where it feels like they always get it but it seems not bad i mean that was like crippling i felt like i had no chance to come back in that game after literally the first turn yeah that was quite uh that doesn't tend to happen it, like just to think of the you know to draw three of a four cards of your 24 card deck from an initial six draw it's not all that likely for it to happen um but yeah the reason why people don't use more than one steel is because a rice it's a beast part so you don't get any health uh, versus three health for a plant move and you also don't have much shield on there so if the opponent does just choose to ram into attacks every single turn and granted they did have a heal on there to try and stop you from doing so mm -hmm. um you just don't have an option to brick call very often so you're really reliant on that sponge to get um shield on his front front axi so it tends to be one that people go with um, and Sirius is just like a staple mouth. You don't really see much movement away from Sirius on the mouth. Yeah. And even though people, we've tried with balance changes, like suggested, I think at one point Sirius had 50-50 shield. Uh, before that, it was up at 80 shield, something <laughs> crazy like that in the first few seasons. And to think that even at 30 shield and 30 damage, it's still the go-to mouth is crazy. Yeah, that is... Um... Yeah, some mechanics are harder to balance than others, I guess, but it's... It's just yeah. the nature of the swing. Like it took me uh, not very much playing Axie to realize the nature of the, like the swing power. It's a double whammy. Yeah. And here again, they've got three steals. Um, oh no, two steals because that's a chomp on their front tank. So I would say you'd want to learn tank. your lesson from last game and probably play more damage. But at the same time, you then may end up being sad because they they choose to yeah. pass. Um, well, so I feel good already good knowing that talent. this guy's got a turn up and I don't have a bird. So th this dude's like, <laughs> this guy's pushing all time MMR highs. He's been killing all these like lobby bird carriers, thinking he's hot shit. Oh, look, it's a YGG scholar. 1593. That's insane. Yeah, there you go. Um, so <laughs> no carrot, right? That's just bad. No way. Because they've got a Mary, I probably wouldn't play a carrot. Yeah, Mary's a high shield move on the beast. I think they've actually played a Mary. Rice Mary, interesting. And they've turned off your heal with their um, Kestrel as well, which is sad because you've got two heals. Oh. Kestrel's the backhand move on their, their Reptile. Oh, yeah, the horn, the headshot. Yeah, my yeah. bird has that. Okay. Ooh, okay. So... so here, probably looking at a single pumpkin, yeah. Because if they have enough beast, beast moves, they're going to kill you either way. Uh, pumpkins helps you against more outcomes again like if they play tank cards and only one beast move you're gonna get you're gonna be able to survive with the pumpkin i see I, i'm understanding more and more why you hate the carrot <laughs> Oof. and another thing is with steals that they can just steal back from the carrot so it's not great true how many cards for your tank draw okay no, not awful lucky. there um and so you still haven't seen any cards from his tank so not looking to attack yet do i skip how do you just pass yeah. yeah, because the main thing you're worried about in terms of damage from the opponent is the tiny dino, and that only activates in round five. So you're not worried yet. Which one's tiny uh, dino? 
the tiny swing there, 150 percent damage. So that absolutely eats up Aquas. Does I think holy shit or something crazy like that. I didn't know this was a thing. 150 da percent damage <laughs> after round four. Oh. Oh no. Okay. Um. Oof. So. Man, this is another tough spot to be in. Damn. Yeah, you're sort of forced to attack, although you know it's probably going to be into a brick wall, which is annoying, but it's just how the game's gone. So do I go, um, like, low damage? I would... I'd probably hold on to the Nemo, to be honest. I'd just go full damage from that guy. Uh, and then even... I wish there's one or two from that the back liner, but I think he's just played um, okay. Tiny Dinos but without the trigger. I'm not sure, though. Oh, so it's round four. It doesn't do anything extra until yeah. round five. Interesting. So that yeah, is Tiny he Dino. Done. He just played two Tiny yeah. Dinos on round four? Yeah. Why would you ever Not do that? See, so teach Scholars better. Oh, no. All right. So you do like this something, right? Ooh, I, I'd go um, double Nemo first. I'm not sure how, yes. how you put it in. So but, just because they're quite low. And then yeah. same again, chucking in one more follow-up in case they go with a massive pit call. Okay, so that looks like a Rice Mary again. So they're going to get one steal, um, but they're not going to get the kill. They're going to do like 80 and then 65. Which is the Rice one? Uh, the Night Steal on the tail. Oh, that's Rice? Yeah. Rice tail, that little white blob. <laughs> oh my gosh, he lived! So, okay. double swift, since he's done? Yeah. yeah, and then the question is whether you kill them yet or not. Um, or leave this alive and hope for the card draw since I go first? Yeah, because I, I feel like this 1v1 is so tough that you almost have to make a play like that. Because you can see in the top right, they are quite low on cards. And they have played a lot of reptile cards, so they might draw more. Uh, you're not sure where they're going to draw, so they might just be out. So I think that's a good play, because uh, you get value out of that guy before okay. he dies. Um, yeah. Looks like a chump and a thorns. I just feel lucky that he wasted his dinos. Yeah, that could have been scary if he'd wasted another turn. Okay. And now just looking to use one card to get the kill. Um, because you have seen two Marys, although they could redraw Marys. I think it, it would take somebody pretty insane to go with a massive brick wall on the beast right here when they know they've got the. I don't the know. YGG Scholar 1593. This guy's crazy. He might be just the guy. All right, let's 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 try the meta. Alright, he skips. This is good. All right. I should say pass, I guess. I gotta stop saying skip. <laughs> okay. And now you can just go as much damage as possible. Um because you know there's no Yeah, right, I go first. Field. So just save save the anemones. Yeah. And then the question is whether you die if they go full damage. Um I think he's gonna do which is tiny dino do? I think he does one six five, and then the kestrels are gonna do one three eight. If um, he's got two kestrels and two dinos, I could be in trouble. All right, well, one five six. Okay, other way around. Um, we're we're yeah, okay. We're gonna live with another kestrel. But okay, and should be able to get the win here. Um, I'd even I just go for damage to be honest, because I think you can just just all damage, and he's dead. Yeah, yeah, just straight up. And you saw there, that was sort of... They could have easily have won that match. It wasn't, like, outplayed them necessarily. Um, the pass was a, a good play, of course. But it was sort of... They brought it upon themselves, going so aggressive with the backliner and not getting a kill with those dinos. And they also used green thorns throughout the game unnecessarily. And that's why they didn't have as many cards in the 1v1 and didn't draw their chump there. Because if they drew the chump, you haven't got enough damage to kill and you just lose the game. Or they have more shields and right. you know, anything goes wrong. So that's why um, you, you always want to be like kind of stockpiling for your backliner if you get to that late game point so you have more options. Yeah, you, you tend to want to always be at a full hand or at least at seven cards so you know you're going to draw um, every single one of your moves or at least you've got one of every move. Um, so then you have your options there again. Okay, that makes some sense. Man, I can't... Feel, so that that's wild. I didn't realize... I didn't really know what Tiny Dino did. I apparently I made some reference as tiny, but it's fierce. And somebody said, you didn't hashtag tiny dino. And I was like, that's because I don't know what tiny dino is. Uh, yeah, I'm showing my that newness was, that here. Was a, that was a joke about, um, I saw that. I I debated making a joke on the tweet as well. It's because you said something about tiny, but fierce. And they, they made a 
tiny diner joke, penis joke. Uh, <laughs> I was seeing whether anybody else would make a penis joke on there as well. I see. Yeah, I mean, that was where I was thinking in my head. I just didn't realize tiny dino also had over, you know, Venn diagram with said phallic imagery. <laughs> yeah, but it was quite, it was, I good. think just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I still, I'm like, yes. I can't believe he played both of those on round four like that. Maybe he thought on that tooltip that it means it kicks in at round four. Yeah. But you would have thought, being a scholar in around 1600, surely they'd have seen the interaction before. But you never know. I guess they were quite close on damage um, if you hadn't have put up a lot shield. Sometimes but, the tooltips yeah. are a little bit like that, where I I read it and yeah, go, is that round four or is that after round four? And it doesn't really... Yeah, the, the wording could definitely be cleaned up. I think a lot of it was just done right at the start and they haven't changed it since. Yeah. Um, at one point, they were able to just go through like... And everyone would just have a list of things. There was in the there's a bot in the Discord that does this feedback suggestions. Of course, now it's crazy because there's so many people in there. But the team used to be able to get changes in within a couple of days. Um, but here again, you see one of these rimps where they're quite combo dependent, so you're not too worried about them being able to get the kill round one. Uh, but this is the card I was talking about with the post fight. I think you've got a post fight bird as well. I do. Uh, where, yeah. Yeah, you start to get more worried because you're if you're on top of counting their energy, oh, you're keeping yeah, track so of how many post fights they've used. Because you know we mentioned keeping track of at least like have yeah. they used two of one card. Post fights are really important one to keep track of because it's essentially just any other 120 damage move that costs an energy, but they can do it without. Um, so, so here, do oof. I go for the heal or do I go for the carrot? Yeah. Want to keep your tank alive. The question is whether you go with a carrot or not. And again, this is this awkward thing with carrot where you know that you're already putting up so much shield that if they do pass, the carrot is pretty much completely wasted. Whereas if you had another tail, like a, a hat soon, you could play that for shield with a heal or a hot butt would be able to turn them off. Um, Going for it. Yeah, really what you're expecting. Worked out really nicely there. Perfect. Okay, we got it. I, You know, I've, I've played this lineup enough. I feel like I'm in the head of Mega Man X right here. <laughs> you know now i will say indes i almost spent big on a tank almost exactly like this because of what you said where i was starting to fall out of favor with the carrot and thought spicy surprise could be good and i watched an elijah video where i was convinced disguise is like the play for your frontliner but i couldn't afford any of them they were too expensive because the video dropped <laughs> so i've yeah, stuck with with big green stuff. here this is this is my original yeah. tank and he's been in like all of my axie lineups <laughs> yeah, I think Leaf Bug's quite a specific thing. It doesn't necessarily benefit every single team. It's ones that don't have any other direct energy gain or are quite energy consuming that it fits yeah. nicely in. So um, do you care? It's also just one of those. Carrot yeah, serious? I do that. Yeah. Um, it's one of those quite noob friendly builds as well. Because, you know, you see, it's that immediate sort of benefit. Ah! That's annoying. That's a mech as well. That shouldn't happen. Are you. They, uh... <laughs> Game's against you today. Oh dear. And now watch them have double post fight as well and just clean through your, uh, your midliner. He might um, actually. Oh yeah. no. The game, I've had some games where they just three beast cards crept through the front tank and then kill the, the acro in the middle with double post fight. Um, but yeah, just all the cards on the midliner because again, it's that, it's that same scenario where the only way you win is you get value out of this guy because you need those Nemos. Yeah. Um, fortunately, they'll, they'll clip you here with some shield, with some of their damage and you'll go fast and hopefully draw some Nemos. Yeah, one of those. Like, you don't want to attack in the brick, but kind of have to. Yeah. Yeah. Is it post-fight or post-flight? I think it's post-fight. That's something that Elijah's asked me a couple of times as well. Because I think it's called post-fight on the card, but flight just, you know, it's a bird. It makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So is this the um, play? Double Nemo in I, case I this guy dies? I would use the double lamb rather than the koi. Uh, because you really want the Koi to be able to speed up against the bird. You're probably going to get those cards back anyway, so it doesn't matter. But, um, I see. Save them for later, though. Case. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I don't really care about the speed right at this moment. Oh, yeah. no, I'm not going to kill him. Oof. Not great. It's because they could be stockpiling a lot of bird cards is the problem. Like here, if they have cards, what you're expecting is um, a three or four card combo from the bird to kill your midliner. And then some amount of cards from their mech as well to damage your backliner but you're not exactly in a position where you can afford to cover that play um covering that play would be playing like a double koi so that you speed up and then can heal up afterwards but 
they have Goda, and they've you've only seen one Goda, so they could knock you down an extra energy, which means you wouldn't be able to make your play afterwards. So it's sort of a, a toss up between just playing one card from your backliner because the midline is dead at this point, or playing the double coy. Um, I wouldn't even play one from the middle. Oh. Ah. Oops. <laughs> Oh. Well, <laughs> all right, I'm too slow. My bad. That actually, um, weirdly, will work out better because he didn't get the kill. I'm surprised. Okay, so here, Koi Lamb. Um, Koi Lamb. Okay, just two. That's it. Yeah. So here, um, even with the tail again, slap draw, because that that guy's gone. He's gonna play at least two bird cards. What you're expecting is mm, some bird yeah. cards to kill your midliner. And then follow up from their mech if yeah. they have it. Okay. And I okay. think is their, their third only has 120 damage moves. You actually win here. Um, you just need to put up as much shield as possible, plus one Koi. So Koi, double lamb, uh, and then something like that. that. And you'll survive whatever he does. Yeah, that's going to be the highest shield. And I should get the kill here. Play Peacemakers here. Um, and try and lower so like, your attack. This game right here is exactly why I stopped playing Beast Bird Plant. Because, like, I don't know, <laughs> by round three, I felt like I would have felt like, all right, I won 100%. I just killed this guy. This guy's getting destroyed. And here we are in a 1v1, a double anemone koi versus a bird. If I'm the bird right now, I am sweating. Yeah, this is it's tight, though, because if they play this correctly, they still win. Um, which is why you're so, you sort of split between plays. Um, because if you go with, actually, if you go double, double anemone koi, um, you survive just. I think that's yeah. going to be the play. Okay. Because you, you're going to have, um, you survive for one HP. Are you serious? <laughs> no, you won't. You'll be just, you'll be just off. Oh, that's annoying. You'll be just short. Um, but they will. Oh, he gets oh. the crit. Oh, now it's definitely not happening. It would have been a draw. Because what would have happened is, um, as long as you were... And you'd have been, they'd have been low enough for where one damage of your card. That is one, one thing I did like about post-fight. Sometimes you can take games where you're basically going to lose all things equal, but you can force it to a draw. That, that is a good feeling. Yeah. And that's the thing with having sort of a heal tank as well. Um, is players tend to go with a bit more damage just because there were lots of spots there where you could have gone with a bit of extra damage but just didn't really have the the ability to um yeah. so you might find that as you play a bit more is without the heals you're just sort of stuck in a this is how i'm going to play the early game this is how i play the mid game sort of so like if what's let's say i have this lineup and i'm looking at swapping out my tank what's your ideal tank for this this kind of double aqua thing um i i would say like you uh, want these but, three and you just this Swap out aroma. I, I'd swap. I'd swap out the carrot for a hot butt. Um, then heal the aroma for a cactus, and then the the pumpkin cirrus is solid. That tends to be what people use. Um, or to make it cheaper, you can swap in beast parts for the horn. So like a, a pocky, or a little branch, or a jewel blade. Is cactus um, that, that thing the that it, does more pure. damage if it goes last? Yeah. So it's it's got lower shield, um, but it's more of just like round one and two. You can deal a lot of damage with your tank, and it sort of fits in with how people play double aqua higher up is where, you know, round one, not expecting as much shield, so you can just spam a bunch of damage early and then play a bit more passive when the opponent decides to play more shield, that sort of thing. Um, it's the general outplay that you do with the double aqua. And with here, you're sort of just set into, you know, I'm trying to get as much value out of my tank as possible, and in order to do so, I have to keep it alive and use the heals, so you can't necessarily deal as much damage. I see. Well, I was just looking at the marketplace, and if I'm crazy, I don't think there's any available for sale that fit that parameter. Unless I did the wrong mm -hmm. one. Okay. Oh, no, there we go. Okay, my browser was messed up. There's, there's no way. <laughs> yeah, there's, I was going to say, there's yeah, absolutely yeah. no way. Oh, yeah, mine did that as well. Yeah, it was doing that earlier. I got scared that I'd been hacked. Just yeah, where it shows my... no results. Yeah. Got it. I just got it to pop up results a second ago. I don't I don't know how, but maybe it's just a one out of five. Oh, there we go. All right, so there's a four breed for point one two. Okay, yeah, you're right. These are pretty mass bred. 
um, especially because I, I've been using the black for a while, but I swapped to this tank like season 14 or 15. And yeah, the, the usual when somebody in the top 10, I think there were a couple of people, other people using it as well. It's just that, you know, it becomes a target to breed because everybody wants it and tries to copy the build. Um, yeah. It's just worse since. I really wish I had stocked up on actual pure axes. I also bought a couple that were labeled as pure that are not pure. They're just six out of six. <sighs> That, yeah, that was I think a, that's, that's something that I'm not sure whether the, the seller doesn't understand it or whether they're trying to just take advantage of people that don't understand it. I, I reckon it's a combination of both. Um, I I don't know. <laughs> I definitely didn't get it. My <laughs> tank is pure. I got kind of lucky. He actually was. He's already been bred a bunch of times, though. Yeah, I might pick up one of these and just play around with it at some point. Not right this moment, but like later today. The... Uh, the cactus is interesting. I got unlucky and one of the aquas I bred had cactus and it's so terrible on aquas. <laughs> yeah, I think um, that that's generally the thing to the market right now is the pures are just crazy. I sold because um, I, I breed for a scholarship. Well, I've got my own scholarship, so I have lines bred for them. Mm -hmm. um, and we had this 100% pure turnip tank. So I thought, well, I'm not going to waste breeding this. So I'll just check it out for an ETH. If it sells, I'll be happy. And it sold within three days, which was just insane that somebody's gone and spent an ETH. On, Pures are on actually worth active. that much right now. That's bananas. Was that a zero yeah. breed? Yeah, zero breed. Uh, it was a solid move set, but still, an ETH when they probably only sell for 0 0.2 a piece when bred out. Um, it's quite crazy. Yeah, that's bananas. Wow. All right. Well, that's yeah. That that's a that's a good call on the tanks. I um, I I thought healing was better. It's weird when you come into a new game from other games and you kind of project truths that you know from your previous gaming experience. Like, man, yeah, healing's really broken in Dota too. I bet healing's really good in this game. And uh, <laughs> one of the free axes that they gave me like a long time ago, like Alex hooked me up with like a battle set in season two that I never used. But the, the one that was labeled as healer, he had the thing that heals the axie in front of him. You know what I'm talking about? It's like it Science doesn't. Swiss, no. it, yeah, I think it's bad. Or, it, or strawberry. There's there's both of those ones. They're like the joint for the, the worst cards in the game. Yeah, that was really generous of the Axie team to give me one of those as my first Axie. I played one battle with it. It was like, this feels <laughs> awful. How do I time? Like timing healing on one Axie is hard enough. Timing it on the Axie in front of you is like, I don't know. Yeah, that, that's a pretty not fun mechanic for a noob. Yeah, there's a couple of moves like that that are just a bit questionably designed. But, you know, it's going to happen. <laughs> um, okay, so this guy's okay. got a legit uh, aqua, though. I know this guy, or I know this thing, right? You get the uh, the <laughs> thing where you attack the idol. Oh, no, he doesn't have the combo. Never mind. You want perch and shell jab. He only has shell yeah, jab. Yeah, that one's a bit... That's a bit evil. Okay. Um, yeah, my bad. I got okay. overly excited. Hey, he's got that one like your one. Um, so I he's think... got this scary mother though. It makes me want to play this. <laughs> yeah. Like again, though, I think you've had some crazy sort of fringe cases. I genuinely won't defend against the print beast round one. Um, All right. You were right. You're right again. <laughs> and now this is when you sort of, the question is how much you defend. You... Generally, I don't like to play pumpkin and, and carrot in the same turn, but since you have so many tank cards, there's something to be said to play a pumpkin and the carrot. Uh, preemptively healing, you generally stay clear of as well. Is that too so, YOLO? Um, yeah, I, I would say so. So I think probably pumpkin carrot, just because you have so many cards on that front tank, and you, yeah. you'd be really sad if it completely so, died. Well, this is another thing that I hate about carrot, is that it it is counterintuitive to the treat. Where like you have these moments where yeah. all right, I get to draw a card or I get an energy. I, I kind of break even. I don't really feel like I got to win there. Yeah. Okay. Again. So um, do you double tail slap? Spot. You, you could. Um, the only argument for it is that they have a faster aqua. So in case they kill your tank, you want to be able to use just straight damage cards next round and not have to worry about gaining energy. Uh, but generally, you wouldn't make this play. But here, I think it's all right. Um, and then the the question really is, again, how much do you defend your tank? Like you can go double Nemo, and then Pumpkin. Do you go double heal? Do you go a heal? Do you not heal at all? Um, it's a difficult decision because, again, it's a rimp. So <laughs> you're basically reliant on whether they've drawn the combo or not because they generally just play it as soon as they get it. Yeah. And all right, he's got a combo. 
And I... She will survive. Oh. As long as I get crap. Okay. I wasn't positive I would. Glad I played the heal. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That heal actually... <laughs> scary. Phew. And then they'll steal one. I, so I am glad I haven't bought um, a Nutcracker rimp, though. Like, I've thought about it. Did you see that? They just they just crit you with their series, so they generated an energy with the imp. Oh, dear. That's miserable. Is that... Oh, my God. It's yeah, crit it's like by any, your any team crit. this round? Are you kidding <laughs> yeah. me? Oh, dear. Okay. okay. I'd Let's probably play double just... serious here. <laughs> oh, dear. <sighs> well, at least he'll he'll tap your your midliner as long as they as long as they played at least one carrot here because it looks like double carrot or any combo of carrots and heels don't be double heel don't be double heel it was double heel okay so you will still be slower um for now so you can go i'd go double piranha well actually double clamshell piranha goldfish would be my play um because oh. you want to play your clamshell for shield and then at least one goldfish just for the speed up um in case they don't hit you with the aqua so but the double speed up does work right like yeah so both, i mean yeah but it's overkill yeah, like you just don't need it yeah and and the thing was here that you you didn't really even need a uh, single goldfish because the way the speed order works is that the second determinant past um speed is the health of an axi um at the time so that you would have had zero uh, health because you're in last stand, so you would have attacked before theirs anyway. Um, so to hit, you're going for your normal split kill. One card from the, the midliner and one card from the backliner. Um, it's a, looking a bit ropey because you, if you had an extra energy, you'd, you'd feel all right. But here, it's just a bit yep. uh, not too sure. And he got happen. another energy gain, dude. He got like <laughs> all of his carrots. He got that lucky crit. He got, oh, God, this is rough. Okay. So okay. here, this is again where you got to make a heads up play and just pass because the it, to think to put yourself in their shoes, they've just gone with four acro attacks. You have four energy. Their beast is exposed. No one in their right mind goes with the beast combo here unless they just have shit tons of energy and they can spare the energy. Okay. You're also not expecting them to have those aqua cards. Mm -hmm. And now again, yeah, he, he passed as well. So now again, you're thinking, well, unless they have four aqua cards you survive um so you i'd go with double lamb um anemone because you don't want to be faster than this than this aqua next round you would rather be slower so that um, i can heal because i want to be able yeah. to yes yeah, and actually on the order go go um lamb anemone then lamb because there's one scenario where if they don't kill you and they leave you in lamb range your trigger allows you to do enough damage to where two of your cards have put the beast into last stand and they'd survive with one one last damn bar, which would not be good. That's some serious um, big brain shit. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I don't think I even knew how last stand mechanics worked, to be honest. So you always want to yeah, hit them with like a the big damage. There's a formula for it. Yeah. Um, I think I looked at but it, but I didn't digest it. Yeah. You, you generally just get a gauge, like end combos with lower damage cards, which lower damage cards. And when you'll get used to how much damage your cards do, so then you'll just be able to work out, okay, I don't want to barely kill an Axie. So he's um, got so here, a pretty comparable amount of energy. Do you want to go double lamb, yeah. double anemone? Yeah. So I would say you either go double lamb, double anemone, or, or double lamb, or lamb, triple anemone. Um, because you know that they're going to use all their energy. You know that they're going to be faster than you because they have the goldfish. And you also know that they're going to have enough shield to survive against any combo of damage you do. And we don't want to use wanna Koi to go first next time? Yeah, because they're... Um, their goldfish will just negate that entirely. All right, so we actually overplayed they, the anemone. Yeah. They've played it well again. It seems people are quite aware of the anemone, which I wasn't expecting, to be honest. Um, so there, you're um, just playing three cards and saving an energy would actually have been better. And I guess that's because in their spot, they've only got 128 damage cards at max um, with the 110 mm -hmm. damage. So they wouldn't be able to kill you if you played all your shield. But you've got a spare energy here, so you're not going to lose. Um, I think you, you'll probably draw. 
uh, no, they just won't kill you when you'll heal up. The question is whether you kill them or not, I think. I think with as long Blood as Moon, care. though, we should be in okay shape. The yeah. worry... Okay, no, the land trigger. That's that's the thing that they were going for there. Which, that was actually really well played. That they're just short by three anyway. <laughs> oh. Oh, my God. That yeah. was... Yeah, you're going to win. Wow. So they played that really well. Um, but for whatever reason, they didn't play their 110 damage cards. I guess they just didn't draw them. Um, because if, they, if they'd have played, instead of the Babylonia, another one of those cards, they'd have got the kill. They'd have been over by um, six damage. Wow. So that was a tight one. But it, it's crazy that all of these players seem to be very aware of the double anemone, whereas sort of other basic things they don't seem to you know, be as aware of. Um, but the double anemone seems to be something they're playing around really well. There seems to be some dynamic of like, I think, what's the way to say this? There are these basically beasts. There's an, a, these illusion axes that seem like they're really, really good to new players. But the more you play, you realize that they're actually pretty easy to play around and they're not nearly as good as they seem on paper. So like the rimps with the cotton tail kind of fall into that category. And I think double anemone is kind of like that. If, like when I was a new player, I saw that and went, Whoa, you stack them and then they double into heal. Whoa, compounding <laughs> heals. I'm on to something. And then, like, you think you're really big brain, and I maybe I'm in, like in, alone in that camp of overvaluing healing. But I think to new players, that idea of like axes that can heal sounds really good on paper before you've really dove in. It's like uh, the anemones yeah, are a little that, bit of a bait. An anemone that definitely falls into that category because not too long ago, anemone again, like. The heal, other heal, like Silence Whisper moves like that was one of those just unusable cards. Nobody used it. Mm -hmm. um, and then it got a damage and also a healing buff, I believe, uh, one season. And that was when you started to see, to see people use it as tanks. Uh, AK and I used it as tanks that season and finished fairly highly and did really well in tournaments with with the build that I told you about at the start with the, the Rice Goda Beast in the middle and the Reptile. And at the time, although it's still a, a decent build to this day, I did a video with Elijah on it, um at, at the time people just were like well how do i kill it they've got steals I'm, i don't want to be energy stolen from so they just spam their cards and you just got loads of anemones and you carried on healing up mm. um and it's that same sort of thing is that until you're used to the mechanic you think you definitely overvalue it and think it's better than it is like it's still a solid move um but yeah. it's not as good as people make it out to be or think like, it is even nemo falls into that category a little bit where it, it's both sides because like one nemo is really good my dumb ass was running double nemo for a while there not nearly as good you end up in these games where you have like nine energy but only two cards to play and it just feels like a waste and you draw another nemo and you're like oh my god why am i doing this to myself <laughs> um so like nemo like sometimes like even like i said with disguise you know you mentioned like it's pretty hyper specific you really don't want it unless you're really running some like backliners that don't have any zero cards but from my perspective it just felt like hey this is objectively good my tank can just give me more energy how's that bad yeah and i think it's different it's sort of a blessing a curse at, in the same time so like, as we spoke about with the, the simple complexity um it, it is nice that newer players they can play and they don't have to be overwhelmed by the complexity and depth to the game but at the same time it then can become quite frustrating when you're trying to explain these concepts to people that, you know, they're pissed off about something uh, <laughs> like, oh, aquas are overpowered. They always speed up and kill my bird. That's something that I see quite a lot. Like they have everything. And then until you realize that there are other, car there are other axes like reptiles and dusks, which easily counter aquas, you can't just say that to somebody. You have to try and, you know, walk them through and explain. Yeah. Um, and it's always a difficult thing, um, especially with, you know, the claims, oh, axes, look dependent or it's it's pay to pay to play like you need to have a really good team otherwise yeah. you know a good team is always going to beat somebody else it's those sort of things are difficult um if they don't understand the complexity and it's also hard to explain it to somebody without almost demonstrating and walking them through it because you could even show them a, a replay of somebody and it's that same thing like you watch somebody else playing you're thinking yeah i would have done that and until you're actually in their shoes and playing yourself you yeah. don't realize how difficult it actually is Everything's like that. I'm always better at uh, Jeopardy when I'm watching, and then when I'm playing Jeopardy, I'm <laughs> terrible. I don't know what it is. I you don't see frontliners with the shell like this very often. The sticky goo. This is an interesting tank. This guy's all over the place. Yeah, that that looks like Beolves. One of Beolves. So before energy tanks were as you've seen them with the pure plants, um, they were on some aquas. They were also turned up on these snail shell builds as well, um, and it was just where they were like the genes were only available on that sort of axi which is crazy to think about if anybody's new like that 
builds just didn't exist. Um, but yeah, that was, at the time, this was what was played. Um, and Snail Shell is generally not used as much on front tanks because it's just more easy to play around it yeah. um, when you've got more axes and you've got, you can calculate it more easily right. in, in order to sort of manipulate like he's done here. Are you watching me big brain this guy right now, dude? Look at this. <laughs> he played double carrot and I didn't break his shield. Oh! <laughs> God, that feels so good. All right, what do I dismiss here? Uh, an Probably anemone? get rid of a, an anemone. Yeah, yeah, and then just heal pumpkin. Yeah. And, and that's the thing um, with the snail shell is that what he's trying to do there is play so much shield that if you played like one card in a Nemo, trying to break the shield then using the Nemo to catch, you would have got caught, caught out and missed one of your high attack moves. But in order to do that, they had to play three energy worth of cards, <sighs> which is just a massive investment. Um, and that's why it doesn't work as well on the front. That was, that was very tight. I'm sniping this okay. so far, but I'm running out of big brain moves <laughs> here. So I think I ditched the healing card, right? And just accept that he's going to yeah. die. I think without a pumpkin, it would be very risky. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and now you've seen one snail shell. Oh, did you see another one there? No. You've seen one snail shell, both carrots, uh, leaf, two leaf bugs, and a serious. So probably expecting to see another... Um, Another snail shell here. So what I would do with the order is I'd go with the Prana up top, then a Nemo. Um, yeah, that's Crimson Water, Nemo, then Crimson Water, and another Goldfish. Um, like this. Well, it doesn't actually doesn't matter that much. Um, but yeah, just in case you saw that, because again, you're not too worried yet about getting the kill. Um, although they've sped up here, so it's not as good. The thinking was that you go first, so you don't have to, you know, use. You don't have to kill this Axie yet, but of course mm. they sped up, so they are able to kill you now. So you need to make... Uh, do you need to? Mm. It's whether you survive or not. It's difficult. Without the third card, they can probably kill you with a four-card combo, so it's a bit risky to go with the cards. Um, if you had four energy worth, the play here would be to go with a couple of cards on your backliner to get the kill on his tank, and then follow up with enough shield to survive against their attacks and enough damage to kill their beast. But the worry, of course, there is that now um, they might kill your Aqua. They might also play a Snail Shell on the front front tank. So you attack into a Snail Shell and you you just lose out on all that value. Um, all right, let's so try we'll this. see how this works. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know if this was the right play. We're going to try it. I think he'll Oof. just get the... Ooh, 134, 128. Yeah, just Oof. enough. Rough. Oof, yeah. Unfortunate. But again, it's not... Well, it, it's bad, but it's not the end of the world. You can still win from here. We've got a um, chance. Okay. So we go same first. Sort of thinking is, so yeah, no so enemies. Same thinking as normal is that there's no point in even attacking because to them, their imp's dead. They may not know you're only at three, um, but to them, their imp's dead because Aqua, Aqua Kill Beast, so don't want to play any cards on it. And that is a really bad play because, of course, it's going to give value to your anemone. Um... So here, I would play probably just triple anemone, to be honest. That's what I was thinking. Because is that that? that won't I think kill they do one thirteen. So you'll just put it to last stand. You won't kill it. Um, but I don't think that's the end of the world, to be honest. Unless they go with these cards. Because they, when it's in last stand, they still draw cards on it, right? Yeah, and that that's why it's like decent for you. Uh, the only worry is that they'll they'll have enough time to draw a four card combo from their aqua. Um, yeah, it's, this is definitely the best play. Okay. okay. I would have been pretty to... tempted to run, like put oh, a fourth no, card it's on it. Short. Yeah, so you could also have done like another damage card instead of that, but I don't think, again, it's not the end of the world because it you is... will still be able to get a heal. It's weird, like these middle beasts, like I, I feel kind of bad for this guy. Like he's probably got the combo, but he's afraid to play it because <laughs> it's just going to be a waste, you know? But the irony is if he had yeah. played it last turn, he would have won already. It's like when yeah. the meta gets so meta, doing the wrong thing is actually the right thing. That's what makes <laughs> and, it... And that's the, the thing, like yeah. lots of people don't think to do this, like passing against Axis because they think, well, they could still go with it. There's that thing in the back of your mind, like if he plays it, I lose the game. Um, it's quite a high level thing that not many people do, but with that quiz, you can get away with it a lot because you're so quick. But I'm not going to um, get to heal that much here, though, because am I going to hit yeah, him twice? Yeah, the worry is. Do I do two? I, you could because you've got energy two, but I wouldn't go with three. I'd go one, either one or two. Um, right, we'll go two. As long as that isn't a Koi, you should still be all right, and you'll actually kill him. <laughs> He's throwing this game so hard. You'll win here with double lamb, double Koi. 
Are you sure? See, this is where I yeah, would. Yeah, because you, you get you get your bonuses. So you're gonna do 152, 152. Oh, yeah. It's gonna be 304, then double 128. So I think, if the math serves me correctly, you should be doing. Are you um... sure you don't want to for an enemy? Isn't that like we'll be at 100? <laughs> percent It's foolproof. You could do it for a troll, but they'll be quicker next round, and then they might be able to finish you off. That's the worry. Oh, um, okay. So I right. think just trying to kill them is is better here. But they're out of energy either way, so I, I think you'd still win. This is just a more consistent play. Okay, all right. I I, I want to believe. I want to see the big numbers here. <laughs> yeah, so you're over by a mile. Yeah. And the worry, I... of course, was that the, the quad anemone or, or something like that, <laughs> they would have survived because you're doing 93 a pop. Uh. And then they'll coy up, so they'll be ahead of you next round, and then two cards might be enough to get the kill. I so would have thrown that with four anemones, dude. Holy shit, you're so right. <laughs> Oh my god, aquas are so ridiculous when it's like these aqua mirror matchups because I have to think about my some situations I really want to go first to do damage first. Some situations I want to go first so that I can heal from the residual damage from last round. Sometimes I purposefully don't want to play Koi so that I can go second and maximize my healing from an enemies because I know he can't kill me. But then you got to factor that in with his Koi and his goldfish bullshit where he's always got the option to go faster. God damn, dude. That's so many variables. I love it. My brain... I feel like I'm playing Dota right now. My brain's spinning. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Coin Breeder in chat says, take the kill, know the math. Yes. Oh, great great <laughs> advice. Easier said than done. Wow. Oh, All right. Well, what do you say we play like one more and then we can uh, wrap this thing up? I'm starting to get a little hungry for lunch. Sounds good. So I've cool. probably got dinner already downstairs. Awesome. All right. Yeah, let's uh, do it. See if we can round out on another win here. Wow. This has been the most dense two hours oh. I've spent in a while. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. All right. <laughs> that so that kind of looks scary. So we got... Uh, this is Tri Spikes, right? Uh, that That's a Green Thorns on the back. Oh, that's uh, Green Tri Spikes thorns. is 80 damage, 50 shield. It's a backdoor move. Here, the, the scary uh, part is that they're... Serastis and Tiny Dino combo, they're going to be doing 156 and 153 uh, per hit. So they'll do just over 600 damage with a full combo against your backliner. And that is over the amount of shield you can put up because your max shield is like 176. So this is like so basically to get, get to round five and buy time with these two we got like beefcake yeah, in the you, front we need to get the kill pretty much and Ooh. for him he's just I don't, it's a weird build because that that bugs more of a backliner um so i probably just pass round one because he's quite combo dependent on his damage um his main damage here is going to be that thorny and he needs triggers for it so he needs either a chomp or a lagging to trigger it it's on on the bug in the middle um, oh oh okay yeah. so i think you can get away with playing fairly low on shield i'd play the pumpkin series here because just because you've got another pumpkin so it's not the end of the world if they pass um and you at least get a card draw out of it versus a carrot just going into their pumpkin and not doing much for you okay get a little steel nice nice okay and now whether you go pumpkin heal or or carrot hill i think is the decision um, the worry with Carrot Heal, of course, is that they just kill you. Uh, worry with Pumpkin Heal is that they pass when you put up lots of shield. It's wasted. Uh, but either way, the heal should get value mm. as long as you're alive. It's going to be a little close. It's going to be very tight. It depends what they've played here. It looks like a snail thing? Uh, no, we're double done. So. Okay. They would have been over either way. Yep. Whether you'd have played a Pumpkin or not. So the Carrot works out nicely there. Um... And so you've seen a carrot and a pumpkin from the frontliner. Um, so you could even pass, but I think at this point that's not a good play because you just you're going to be ramming into a tank rather than getting what to the position we wanted to get to at the start, which was you know getting some damage off on their backliner whilst you still can. Um, so probably all four cards from this guy. Uh, no, I'd save the Nemo, Nemo even, yeah, wow. just all four damage and then one from the backliner as well. I still haven't wrapped my Actually, brain around right either way. the ideal time to use the Nemos. So in this matchup, uh, looking to use it to catch his uh, snail shell in the middle um, or just to play around last stands here because you know that 
like here you can go piranha double nemo um and you know that you're so the way the class bonus works is that because you're at minus 10 minus 15 percent against plants but you've got you do it the other way around with the piranha first and then double oh. nemo um you're gonna do 120 30 30 so if he puts up no shield the first two will hit he'll have one hp the third one will hit and he'll die if you'd have gone the other way around with a double nemo piranha he's more than likely last stands um and now you can add on one from the backliner as well just to make sure you got the kill so like uh, a, a lamb or something gotcha, like that okay and that was why you went this way around rather than the other way where you oh know God, that he probably would have last stood out of this yeah <laughs> So he probably would have last stood out of that, and then this lamb doesn't hit the bug. Instead, it just rams into, um, rams into his last stand as well. Okay. I so have here, so much practicing to do. Okay. This is a bit awkward because you know that he's going to try and brick all this midliner, um, yeah. and you don't have a great way of playing around it. Like ideally, you have uh, your midliner be faster, so you can just play loads of cards on it and not worry about being stunned on your backliner. But unfortunately, that's not going to happen here um, because you've got to play, I, I would say, two cards from the backliner, two cards from the midliner, using the clamshell first because you're going to get your bonus damage with the with its ability. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. And then probably just koi, double koi here as well. Something like double that. Double really what you play. Yeah, okay. Okay, so you knew he's going to put up a lot of shields. And th the worry, of course, is this stun here on your backliner isn't great, but you have to have to be stunned. There was no way you around gotta, that. yeah to get the kill um and, and that this is this is what we're worried about oh god that yeah. is some damage flame kill Jeez, Oof. okay Oof. and here as you were stunned i don't think there's any way around it but to pass they if they're low on energy they may also just pass and then it's sort of again not a great position but we'll okay. see All they right. played that fairly well to be honest saving your energy i'm not sure they may be at three energy here um, they were only at three cards last round, according to the card counter, at least. Uh, top three, so they had three. So they used three, which means they can't kill you here. So you can opt for a bit of damage. I would go, like, uh, anything to catch catch a stun. Then you want to use... Um, you don't need to use two anemones here. You can use two coils, to be honest. Um, Should you do one anemone? Are you sure? Yeah, just, just one anemone, because they've... They've only got three cards, at least as long as the card counter isn't lying to us in the top right corner. They're only at three cards, which means they can't kill you. Um, so just go for the damage instead. Okay. Yeah. So it, fortunately, it wasn't lying to us. Sometimes it gets a bit confused with discards or like dead axes and it, it throws the counter off. Oh. So see here, now he's short, which is amazing for you because Ooh. you can heal up. Um, and I'm so not here. stunned. So all right, we got to think about yeah. this. So we want first one, the, yeah, and then the lamb, and then double an enemy. Is that the play? Yeah, I think that that was what I was thinking as well. Um, because you want to heal up a lot. And if you get stunned, you want to be able to at least carry on surviving and surviving and surviving. So that's probably the play. Because you know you, you have to heal there, because otherwise you can chomp anything. Kill yeah, you. I just want to maximize heals. The stuns are scary. He didn't get much damage either. Um, oh, he didn't have the... Oh, yeah, he doesn't have a, a snail. Duh, I'm an idiot. Oh, okay. This is a bit scary here. I think Ooh. we're okay. No crits, no crits. Yeah, so max one heal. So just probably a double anemone. You're just trying to survive till next turn. Uh, but it's not looking too great. You're gonna have what 88 shield, 100 heal, 188. Two, yeah, any any two damage cards, you'll get the kill. But to be honest, getting this far in this one v one was pretty good. Yeah, your cards are, are gone, so that's normally a cue to you've that, died. That you're done. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a good little hack too. I didn't know that. <laughs> oh man! Oh. oh. Yeah, oh, the Blood Moon the, Curse, gotcha. Blood yeah. Moon. Rough. Forgot about that. That was a lot closer than it than it could have been. Dude, we, we made a couple of misplays at the end. That's a that's a hell of a strat though, where you just basically build up this super tanky front line and then that late game damage dealer. Is, that's a reptile in the back. Yeah. So it's bug in the middle, reptile in the back. Whew. 
Yeah, it's an interesting build. People normally play the beast because the thing with that that backliner is, as you said, you want to be building up all those cards on it for the late game. So a beast is quite good because they have high damage. The, the better ones have energy control as well. So you don't necessarily need to use the reptile at all in the early game. You can use like predominantly plant and beast moves and just stack up cards on the on the reptile. Mm -hmm. um, the problem with his build was that the midline bug. It was sort of it was more of a backliner to be honest. That that's like a terminator, but on a on a bug so he's quite combo dependent for his damage he needs to trigger that thorny for damage and the snail shells not very useful until the bugs exposed so he's sitting with dead cards as well so it just becomes this whole game of dead cards waiting until the mid game to get value out of things i can't believe how poorly i've been playing against beasts for the last like three months dude that whole he's already dead so just let him rack up dead cards that is some big brain stuff that is to be honest, like a lot of people, even in the top 10, make that mistake. It's a very specific thing and specific to certain builds as well. Like double acro is where you really yeah. realize it. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Wow. Well, shit, man. Um, I, I hope I'm going to upload this to YouTube. I hope this was uh, some testament to your coaching services. Hit me with some plugs, man. It sounds like you're uh, you're trying to be coach in Des. That's what your Twitter tells me, at least. Yeah, so I, I have... Well, I don't really use Twitch as much, but I do do a weekly podcast with Z. Uh, he's been in the chat on that account of the Axie Arena. So we go over anything from what's happened in the arena to balance changes um, every week. It's normally an hour and a half, two hours. Also on that channel, uh, Z is going to start streaming more regularly with his budget challenge. Um, I think, Z, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was about 0.15 ETH and he was trying to build a team and go as far as he can. I'm also doing running a similar one with a 0.25 ETH team. Um, trying to finish top 50 or at least get as close as I can to it. Um, and then other than that, I've, I'm on Twitter at Indez underscore AxiGG and coaching links and everything like that uh, on the Twitter as well. So is Axie Arena just a podcast or is it like more and then so you guys also do a podcast? Yeah, so initially it started off as just a pod podcast, but we're, we're starting to um, sort of build it into more of a channel with we're going to both be streaming on there um, one to two times a week as well. And there'll be more coming along with that as we build it up. Um, because the, the podcasts have been a bit here and there because I've been ill, Z's been ill um, the past couple of weeks. It's not been as regular, but we're hoping to ramp it up over the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Very cool. All right, man. Well, there you go. I, uh, I linked the coaching doc in chat there. So uh, I suppose check that out. That's got a lot of the info. I just stole that right from your Twitter. Hopefully that's okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, outside of that, that was just so much info to digest, man. I feel like I need to like go eat lunch and think on all that and then come back to Axie in 24 hours and try to apply some of the stuff I learned because that was, <laughs> Jesus, that was, uh, that was a power session. Thank you so much, buddy. I appreciate it. Hopefully uh, we'll get to catch up again, cast a tournament together or something. Uh, I don't know. I don't know when our paths will cross next, but I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, thanks for having me on. And yeah, as as you said, looking forward to whatever the future holds. And best of luck um, with your, your newfound build and see how you do in the arena. 